Thank you, Susan. Uh, Aerie is a publicly traded company. There will be some forward-looking statements. Um, at Aerie, we're focused on bringing new and innovative treatments uh, to the treatment of eye disease. And in the last year and a half, we have launched two new products uh, for the reduction of IOP in patients with glaucoma. The first product, Ropressa, uh, contains an active ingredient, Natarsidil, that's a rokinase inhibitor. It's the first new mechanism of action drug for the treatment of glaucoma in over 20 years. The second product, Roclitan, is a combination of Natarsidil with Latanoprost, and it was launched in May of this year. It's the first product to be approved based on demonstrating superiority to a prostaglandin analog, uh, which is the most widely prescribed drug class in glaucoma. Uh, for today's talk, I'm going to be focusing on our pipeline activities and specifically our retina program, where we have two products that have uh, entered the clinic, AR1105 and AR13503. And I also will tell you about our sustained delivery technology uh, that we've used to advance those products. Uh, our pipeline in general is uh, quite diverse, and it's really driven by our expertise in small molecule drug discovery. We have over 4,000 small molecule kinase inhibitors that have been generated uh, by ARI scientists and characterized in the ARI labs. Uh, the retinal disease market, we think, is a, an interesting opportunity for uh, our uh, expertise. Um, and uh, as shown here, and as everyone knows, is dominated primarily by biologics, uh, the anti-VEGF class of drugs. Um, our approach to retinal disease is to bring small molecule therapy to treatment of back of the eye. Uh, most of the drugs, uh, as I alluded to, that are currently being used for treatment of retinal disease are large molecules. Uh, the advantage of a small molecule therapy is that it can address a, a wider array of targets. Uh, the biologics are limited to, to just extracellular targets. The challenge we have with small molecule therapy for back of the eye is that small molecules are very rapidly cleared after injection. So you'd have to inject them on a weekly basis uh, at least um, uh, if you don't have some way to keep that drug uh, um, in the back of the eye. So the way we've addressed this problem is uh, we have identified a drug delivery uh, technology and established a drug delivery platform that allows us to pair our small molecules uh, and present them into the back of the eye in sustained release implants that can be injected uh, every four to six months. Uh, this is basically our approach. We begin by screening our small molecules in preclinical models of, of disease. And those molecules that look the most uh, interesting and, and promising, we pair with a um, polymer-based, a, a bioerodible polymer-based technology that we've licensed from uh, the company DSM. We take the formulation of this bioerodible polymer and the, the potent small molecule and we use a manufacturing technology called PRINT uh, to manufacture these implants in a very uh, robust and reproducible fashion. The implants themselves can be injected into the back of the eye, but they can also be injected into the front of the eye, which gives us an opportunity to uh, address a wide array of uh, eye disease. So the unmet needs that uh, we're particularly trying to address um, uh, begin, as I alluded to, with the fact that there's primarily one drug class, particularly in AMD, uh, that's being used to treat this disease. And I think everyone would agree that AMD is a very complex disease, and the idea that it could be adequately treated with a single drug class um, uh, is, is highly unlikely. And, and we've seen this, and it's been alluded to, uh, if we just follow patients, even those that initially have a very robust response to anti-VEGF therapy, after five to seven years, uh, typically much of that benefit uh, is lost. So that tells us that the, the disease is progressing in spite of the anti-VEGF therapy. Um, 
there are no products to prevent the progression from dry AMD to, to neovascular AMD. And clearly, that's a, a large unmet need. If we turn to diabetic macular edema, uh, there, right out of the gate, uh, about one in three patients do not get an adequate response to anti-VEGF therapy. So clearly, new treatments are needed, and prefer uh, preferably those treatments should have a less frequent injection frequency than the current products. So that brings us to our uh, two retinal products, AR1105 and AR13503. AR1105 is a uh, dexamethasone eluding implant. Its target product profile is to uh, elute dexamethasone over a full six-month duration so that it can be injected at a lower frequency than the currently used dexamethasone implant. Uh, we have a um, more highly controlled release of dexamethasone from this implant, and with that uh, better release profile, uh, we also believe there's a potential to have fewer side effects than the uh, current dexamethasone implant. With AR13503, this is an entirely new drug class for treatment of retinal disease. This is a rho kinase inhibitor and protein kinase C inhibitor. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about the mechanism of action of that, uh, of that drug. Um, we have shown in preclinical models it can be effective uh, both as monotherapy and as an adjunct to anti-VEGF therapy. And again, we expect this would require injection uh, once every six months. Or we might be uh, losing our battery on this advancer. Um, so why rokinase inhibition for, uh, for these diseases? And there's a large literature uh, in which various different rokinase inhibitors have been tested in, in a variety of, of uh, models of retinal disease, AMD and diabetic retinopathy. And what's been seen is that inhibition of rokinase uh, reduces not only angiogenesis in these models, but also can reduce inflammation, fibrosis, breakdown of the blood retinal barrier, um, uh, which are all critical aspects that underlie disease and disease progression in AMD and, and DME. Uh, this is just a, an experiment showing, we've presented in the past the data showing that AR13503 uh, can act as a monotherapy in these preclinical models. This is an oxygen-induced uh, retinopathy model in which we show that the combination of AR13503 where we, uh, and uh, ILEA as an anti-VEGF product uh, is incredibly potent. We took two sub-optimal um, dose levels, mixed them together, and we got a dramatic reduction in the um, neovascularization of 60 percent. We've similarly shown that the RPE, um, uh, the ability of the drug to improve the barrier function of RPE and culture. So in conclusion, we have a broad um, platform uh, in our pipeline addressing a number of different diseases uh, in the back of the eye as well as front of the eye. We're leveraging our drug delivery technology with our small molecule chemistry, uh, and we look forward to presenting the uh, clinical data for the AR1105 and 503 implants uh, once it's available. Thank you.